Hi, this is a tutorial on how to do pigeon without pain. Uh, it's a very common pose in so many classes, and it's such a wonderful posture. And yet, sometimes um, the posture can be done, in which case it leads to some discomfort or pain in the, in the front knee. I want to show you a couple tips that I've learned over the years that have helped me do the practice without pain and show you some ways that I've seen that the posture has been practiced that I think could not be leading to balance or, or support long term. So for this tutorial, you'll, you'll want a block and a blanket. Okay. And to start, we're going to come into the pose um, from a plank, downward dog uh, variation. And you're going to draw, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what generally I see happens and then we'll adjust from there. So generally people step the foot forward more into a lunge and then kind of inch or walk or work the foot over to the side to come down into the pose. What it does is it starts to jostle the hips and the knee and there's not a lot of fluidity to it. What we really want to do is take the leg forward and as, as the leg comes forward, also going to turn the leg out to the side. So leg's going to come forward. It's going to sweep to the side. The top of the foot's going to come down. It's really helpful because if the top of the foot doesn't come down, then it's the toes that kind of get stuck and you have to work your way over into the pose. So when you come through, you want to come and turn the foot out to the side, take the top of the foot down, and then you're going to draw yourself onto the outer edge of the leg, the shin bone and knee. From here, this is like the setup in the pose. In every pose, there's a setup. This would be the setup. Your hands are supporting you, so there's not too much weight in the leg. Then you're going to slide your back leg back slightly. Even drop your knee down as you need to. This might be as far as you get. From here, you could take a block or a blanket and slide it underneath your hip. From here, depending on the flexibility in your hip, you might start to draw your leg out to the side a little bit. But if it causes pain in the knee, it's not right. It's, not, it's too far. So you want to bring your foot back closer to your front hip. And just settle here. The arms are really important in this pose because they're holding your weight. They're steadying you. And by transferring weight to your hands, you're taking some pressure off of the front hip, consequently the front knee. As time progresses, and if you practice this regularly, you'll experience that you can possibly come down further, i.e. shift a blanket to the block or a block to the blanket and settle. And then more and more, you'll find that the leg could come out to the side as flexibility increases. And then you'll start to use, still use the weight in the arms as a brace and maybe move down toward the elbows. One thing I've seen that, that a lot of people do that I don't think is really the best is coming into the post and really flexing the front ankle to push the leg further forward. What happens is by the focus on flexing the front ankle, it causes a lot of strength, but the torque on the knee is a potential. So we want to release the foot. You want to let the leg be released here so that the, that the hip can start to release. If we come into the pose and there's pressure in the knee, it's not that the ankle's not right. It's not that the knee's not right. The knee's a hinge joint. It's only going to bend in one direction. It's that the hip orientation, the foot's not right. So you want to bring the foot back and adjust. And really, one of the keys is weight on the hands. As you weight your hands and square your hips, you're going to be able to slowly settle yourself straight down over time. Be patient and have some compassion. Hope you enjoy. And thanks for joining me.